Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the entire staff of Beechridge Motor Speedway and the Cusack family, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Maine's oldest continuing operating family-owned speedway. My name is Bruce Elder, your race commentator. And tonight, Beechridge Motor Speedway is host to the Northeast Midget Race Association, back for a second try on a beautiful night here at the Beechridge Motor Speedway. We will be opening with qualifying heats in all of our three divisions. Fifteen laps on tap. The top 12 to qualify for the main event. Assistant starter Junior Niles atop the flag stand for heat number one. Gives the drivers the all clear as they work the back stretch. Looking for a start at turn four. Steve Reno and Earl Glidden bring them down. Green is out. Phil Frenette gets it turned about up into the infield as the green flag flies. He keeps it underway. The cars stay under green. Tough break for Phil Frenette in the 66. Pole sitter Steve Reno continues to show the way. Bring him down for lap number one, followed by Glidden. Then comes Don Whitten in the 83. Rick Verrill trying to make a move to the outside of Whitten in the number 64. As the top four have broken away just a bit, Verrill on the move to the inside. Takes over the third place position. Whitten trying to battle back for that position. Unable to do so. Verrill now looks to make the move to the outside of Glidden in the number 76. Rick Verrill on the move in the number 64. Verrill puts the nose ahead down into turn one, trying to take over that second place position. Glidden tries to draw it even on the back stretch, and he does. They go wheel to wheel to turn three, side by side battle for that second place position. Last qualifier at the moment would be Richard Olin in the 69. Remember, only 12 cars to qualify. The rest will have to come back and try to do it via the consolation event. Barrel has lost some ground on the backstretch now, and Don Witten is up to challenge once again. Steve Reno has taken the opportunity to put some distance between himself and the rest of the pack as the second, third, and fourth place competitors do that side-by-side -side battling. Steve Reno puts some distance on the rest of the pack. Comfortable lead now for Reno. Last qualifier at the moment, I believe, would be the zero of Gary Clough in that 12th place position. Paul Ross trying to make the move to the outside of Phil Weber. They go side-by-side -side across the strike. Blackman indicates it will be halfway next time around. Eight down and seven to go as Reno crosses the stripe at the halfway point. Last qualifier once again now. Richard Olin in the 69 holds that 12th and final qualifying position. All of these drivers wanting to qualify via the heat and avoid the consolation event if they possibly can. Very competitive limited sportsman division. Problems on the zero of Gary Klopp as he takes the car into the infield, has to get right out of the gas and loses a lot of time. And with it, a qualifying position. Gary Klopp now outside of a qualifying position. Last qualifier, I believe, at the moment would be the 59. 59 driven by Frank Scott. Three-way battle for that third place position. Don Witt, Rick Verrill, and Don Tapley. Blagman indicates just two to go next time by.
two laps to go. A white flag in the air, one to go. Tangle on the back stretch. Frank Scott and Gary Clough come together. Scott up against the back stretch wall. Radiator gone on the David Wiles car. Check it. Flag flies for Reno in the number seven. Followed by Glidden in the 76, Whitten in the 83, Barrel in the 64, and Don Tapley in the 15. I believe the last car to qualify in that first qualifying heat for the limited sportsman was the number 91 of Dave Culprit. As he coasts down to the start finish line, nice round of applause, please, for Steve Reno, winner of heat number one in the limited sportsman division. Rolling on the speedway now, the first qualifying heat for the super sportsman division. On the pole, driving the number 15 is Butch Buzzle. Butch Buzzle, Tim Maloney, green is up. Butch Buzzle right from the point in the Ford Thunderbird. Down into turn one, Bobby Cotton, the rookie, in the number 17, and Tim Maloney. Spike Matatal looking for room to the inside in the number 89. Super Sportsman Division, brand new class here at the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Butch Buzzle, young man who's had more than his share of problems on the number 15 this year, hoping to get those sorted out. Now Bobby Cotton finds some room to the inside, works beneath the 15 of Butch Buzzle. New leader on the backstretch, Bobby Cotton in the number 17. Cotton, a young second generation racer out of Tamworth, New Hampshire. Now has Spike Manitol in his back bumper. Manitol, a former modified competitor here at the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Then comes Doug Shores in another Ford Thunderbird, the 07. Steve Howard in the 03. Tim Maloney rounding out the top five in the number 69. Flagman Eddie Walsh indicates they'll be coming up on the halfway point next time by. Five down, five to go. The lead belongs to Bobby Cotton in the number 17. Then comes Spike Matatal. Doug Shores looks to the outside of the 89 of Matatal. Shores not finding that outside groove to the 07's liking at this point in the evening. Gives up some ground. The third place now goes over to Steve Howard in the 03. As he works beneath the 07 of Shores. It will be two laps to go, indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. Here comes Spike Manitol with a bid to the outside of the number 17 of Cotton. That opens up the inside for Steve Howard. Howard now challenging for second. Gets a fender ahead on the backstretch, takes over the second place position. White flag will be in the air. Here comes Shores back to the inside to try to take over third. One lap to go. Advantage definitely appears to be to the inside group. Bobby Cotton, Stevie Howe, Doug Schultz, check it, flag in the air. Bobby Cotton collects heat number one. Followed by Steve Howard in the 03, Doug Shores in the 07. Spike Manitol and Tim Maloney. As Bobby Cotton coasts down to the start finish line area. Nice round of applause for the winner of heat number one, the Super Sportsman Division. Bobby Cotton out of Tampa, New Hampshire.
Staging for a start at turn four, Tim Land and Steve Carrier will bring the field down. Ten laps on tap. Heat number one for the late models. Green is out. Tim Land right from the point. Gary Palsifer from the inside gets the jump on Carrier for that second place position. Carrier trying to come back on the outside but goes high and that will open things up for Gary Johnson. But he couldn't quite get there before Carrier was back on the hammer and gets it back down into the second groove. On the outside now with a challenge at the point, Gary Palsifer in the 27 works to the outside of Tim Land. Across the stripe, Palsifer the new leader. Gary Palsifer, veteran, late model sportsman, campaigner out of Gray, Maine. Takes the 27 to the point. Bobby Libby working to the outside now of Tim Land. Bobby Libby out of Standish, Maine on the move in the number 34. Works it to the outside of the 16 to take over the second place position. Tim Land fights back from the inside. Slight advantage for that second place position to Libby in the 34. But Land is not going to give up easy on the back stretch again. Side by side through turns three and four. At the halfway point, five down, five to go. Barry Babb momentarily boxed in as he is at the back bumper of Tim Land. Has Libby to his outside. Barry Babb with an impressive run last week. Led about 30 laps of the 35 lap feature. Only to have a tire go away. It's got to be tasting victory here soon in that zero. Hard charger out of Wyndham, Maine. Also a second generation racer with his brother Bobby Babb. Babb looking for a way underneath the 16. Has not been able to find it. Has Bobby Libby to his outside. Sits there boxed in in position three. It will be two to go as they cross the stripe this time. Eight down, two to go. Babb into the outside groove now. Will dive to the outside of Tim Land in the 16. Barry Babb now out of the box, working to the outside. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Here comes Babb to the outside. One lap, if he's going to find a way. Here he comes under Palsifer, Barry Babb. Battling for the lead with Gary Palsifer. Babb puts the fender of the head out of turn four. Barry Babb. Impressive run. Had the opportunity to talk with Barry Babb during the week. As he coasts down to the start finish line, a nice round of applause please for Barry Babb. Winner of heat number one of the Model Sports the Division. Zero is sponsored by Portland Insulation. And the first heat will get pushed off from Pit Road. On the pole, in the Monte Carca line, Graniteville Chrome Volkswagen. From Chelmsford, Massachusetts, and the number 17 is Bill Marcy. Outside, driving the John Lane Chevy 2. From East Taunton, Massachusetts, and the number 24 is Keith Botello. Bill Marcy and Keith Patello are going to form the front row. Paul Lawless, Steve Eldridge. Then Jeff Horn, the winner at Thunder Road, beside Joey Coy, the winner at Star and Lee. Make up the third row. Bobby Seymour, the winner at Riverside Park at Agawam. On the inside of the fourth row, then Matt O'Brien, Greg Store, and Mike Lugel in that brand new machine with the Olds engine number 77. But here we go, the green is out. Into the first turn, Bill Marcy leads from the inside. Paul Lawless comes through on the bottom to take over second. And Joey Coy takes third. Lawless gets down on the inside, takes the lead coming out of turn four. Lawless leads the first lap with Coy right behind him. Horn sneaks down on the inside as Marcy's pushing a little bit and loses that inside groove. Down a back stretch, it's Lawless in the Volkswagen. Joey Coy in the Fontana. 
Horn in another Volkswagen and Seymour in a Volkswagen. Now Joey Coy gets down inside. The Paul Lawless can't quite hold it coming out of turn two. Lawless still has the lead. Lawless pushes out a little bit wide, hikes that left front, not good handling practice, and Coy takes the lead. Coy is the one that was trapped at 104 miles an hour, so you can see that he's running well. Seymour and Horn now come around the outside as Seymour goes from fourth to second, leaving Horn back and forth. He doesn't quite seem to be able to get the job done as Paul Lawless stays in the middle there. The Fontana is an all aluminum sort of copy of a Chevy 2. And it's got a lot of power. You can see that the Volkswagen of Seymour does not have the power, but he's driving in much deeper. The Volkswagen is a lighter engine. Seymour hanging out the outside, trying to get around Coy. Coy running right around the rail, but that isn't going to be good enough as Seymour around the outside, down the back stretch, has half a car length lead. Drives it much deeper into turn three and has the lead coming out of turn four. Bob Seymour. Seymour missed our race last Saturday night because he was down at Pocono running Kenny Schrader's sportsman car. Two to go, two to go for Seymour. Coy. Jeff Horn has finally got around Lawless for third, and Lawless is fourth. Bruce just got Seymour at 13.38. The yellow is out. The yellow is out as I... The only problem I see is Mike Lugel is running slow and couldn't manage to get to the inside of the track. Now with that increased power on the outside, Coy will have the momentum up. Let's see what he can do against the Volkswagen. Just two to go. The green is out. Seymour holds the line on the inside, dives into turn one, hangs on there, and Coy has to drop into second. Jeff Horn starts moving up now from that third spot. Lawless is fourth, Eldridge is still fifth. Horn now beginning to work on Coy, who isn't handling well himself, hiking that left front. Seymour now begins to pull away, and it's going to be a relatively easy win for Bobby Seymour, who calls Marlboro, Massachusetts home. Driving the Urati Automotive Volkswagen. Joey Coy was second. Jeff Horn third. Paul Lawless fourth. And Steve Eldridge fifth. Fifteen laps on tap. Once again, 12 cars to qualify for the main event. Bringing them down, Scott Chapman and Jimmy Emerson at turn four. Green is out. Jimmy Emerson from the outside. Picking up where he left off last Saturday night, having led all 75 laps of the limited sportsman spectacular. Young hard charger out of Wyndham, Maine. Jimmy Emerson jumps right over. Quick lead. Problems between turns three and four. Scott Chapman gets turned about in the number 85. Pokes the car back down toward the infield pit road. That will bring out the caution flag. Chapman gets the car refired, but not before the caution flag is in the air. to restart tonight's second qualifier for the limited sportsman division with one lap down. Ready to go at turn four. Green is out. Jimmy Emerson once again jumps in with quickly. Followed this time by Gary Adams in the 74. Then comes Chuck Haynes in the 68. Dwight Shepard up to fourth in the 34. Gordon Nelson in the 61 rounds out the top five.
These are the high point men in the limited sportsman division. High point men on the move on the backstretch. The blue number 78, that's Dave Fecto. He is the point leader in the limited sportsman division. 12th place now. Up for grabs between the 80 and the 25. 80 of Daryl Ward, the 25 of Kevin Buck. A lot of top cars sit outside of a qualifying position. Several hard chargers. And drivers who have won feature events this year are outside of a qualifying position at this moment. with a comfortable lead. Last qualifier, I believe, at the moment would be the number 12. Tim Gendron in the number 12 would be the last qualifier. Knocking on the door of the top five. Billy Thompson in the number six. Looking for racing room at the back bumper of the 24 has the 61 of Gordon Nelson to his outside. This qualifier, I believe, would be the 25 right now. Coming up on the halfway mark in the Cates Flagman Eddie Walsh. It will be eight down and seven to go as they cross the stripe. Billy Thompson now trying to find a way into the top five. Caution flag out. Beaver Norton at the top of turn two. Finally gets the 38 refired, but not before the caution flag flies. Stage for a start at turn four. Once again, Jimmy Emerson on the pole. Gary Adams to his outside. Veteran Dwight Shepard inside of row two. Chuck Haynes to his outside. They pick up the pace. Green is out. Jimmy Emerson jumps right back into a quick lead. Here comes Dwight Shepard up the inside to take over second. White Shepard in the 34 with a move beneath Gary Adams. Takes over the second place position, dropping Adams back to third. Danny Bubar is fourth. Chuck Haynes is fifth. Thompson in the outside groove in the number six, trying to find a way out and around the line to once again get up and challenge the leaders. Thompson first worked to the outside of the number 80, now looks to the outside of the 61 of Gordon Nelson. Pee Wee Knight also following suit on the outside. Along with Jeff Morgan in the number 70, Rick Frenette in the 54. Larry Gelinas in the 37. Some of the heavy hitters still sitting back there outside of qualifying. Last qualifier at the moment, I believe, would be the 70 of Jeff Morgan. Coming up on two to go indicates flagman Eddie Walsh. Only the top 12 will grab a qualifying position in the feature event. White flag is out one lap to go. Last qualifier continues to be Jeff Morgan in the number 70. 
That leaves a lot of good cars outside of a qualifying position. Checkered flag in the air. Jimmy Emerson continues his winning ways, grabbing the second qualifying heat for the limited sportsman division. Coasting down to the start finish line. A nice round of applause, please, for the winner of heat number two in the limited sportsman division, Jimmy Emerson out of Wyndham, Maine in the 73. Back row, the 72 of Mark Field, the 08 of Mark LeBlanc round out. The second qualifying heat for the Super Sportsman Division, flagman Eddie Walsh gives the all clear from atop the flag stand. Dave Bath, Danny Palmer, Scott Mulkern tonight in the 08. Green is out. Just been given the word that Scott Mulkern is behind the wheel of the 08 tonight. Dave Bath shows the way right from the point. Battle is for second. Bubba Pelton, Danny Palmer gets it a little bit sideways. Does a nice job of straightening the car out. Bubba Pelton now with the advantage for that second place position. Works the 27 beneath the 93. Kevin Durgan on the move on the inside. Things a little loose from the 93 in that outside groove. Has to back out of it just a little bit. That opens up the inside for Chris Rule and Ken McLeod in the number six as both cars work beneath the 93 of Danny Palmer. Bubba Pelton into the outside groove now in the 27. Trying to mount a challenge to race leader Dave Bath. Decides to tuck it back in and follow the number five as Kevin Durgan was filling that inside groove. And McLeod sets the number six in the outside groove, works to the outside of Chris Rule in the 14. They'll be approaching the halfway mark this time by. Five down, five to go. Race leader continues to be Dave Bath in the number five. Bubba Pelton in the 27, Kevin Durgan in the seven. Ken McLeod and Chris Rule going at it wheel to wheel for position four. Ken McLeod continues to work the number six in the outside groove. Mounting a challenge now for the third place position as he works to the outside of Kevin Durgan. Flagman Eddie Walsh indicates just two to go next time by. Pelton looks to the outside of the number five, tucks it back in again as they enter turn four. Side by side battle for position three. Durgan to the inside, McLeod to the outside. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Ken McLeod with a slight advantage for that third place position now. Checkered flag in the air. Dave Bath will capture heat number two for the super sportsman, followed by Pelton, Ken McLeod, Kevin Durgan, and Chris Rule. Coasting down to the start finish line. Nice round of applause, please, for Dave Bath, winner of heat number two in the super sportsman division. Number five, sponsored by Weirds Motor Sales. Turn four, Green is out. Glenn Cusack with the advantage. 
Bobby Babb working to the outside, tries to draw it even and does so at turn three. Glenn Cusack to the inside, Bobby Babb to the outside. Cusack with the advantage, bringing him down for lap number one. Babb battles back to the outside. Joe Bowser looking for racing room to the inside. Top-notch late model sportsman competition. Battle now for second as Joe Bowser has drawn it even with Bobby Babb. Side by side battle right back through the back. It's a very even field of late model sportsman jockey for position. Glenn Cusack begins to put some distance on the rest of the back. As the side-by-side -side battle continues now, Joe Bowser with the advantage. Babb gets the car sideways out of turn two. Does a nice job of collecting the number four. Loses some ground. Halfway point. Five down, five to go. Glenn Cusack turning the track in about 15-4-2. Quick time on the number two. Randall looking to mount a challenge to the outside of the 56 of Andy Lou. Mike Mayetta dives to the inside of Randall. Cusack continues to turn the track into just a little under 15 and a half seconds per lap. Coming up on two laps to go. Eight down, two to go. Couple of former champ champions going at it, wheel to wheel. Babb once again gets the car sideways out of turn two. Has to back out of it. White flag in the air, one to go. Problems on the number four as he appears to be taking the car to pit road. Checkered flag flies. Glenn Cusack captures heat two for the late model sportsman division, followed by Joe Bowser. Have a call for Clifford Roy Jr. Please see the officer at the main gate. Clifford Roy Jr. Please see the officer at the main gate. As he coasts down to the start finish line, a nice round of applause, please, for Glenn Cusack in the Cherry Coke number two. Duma says they're ready to go. Bobby Seymour's off the track. The green is out. Harry Johnson leads him across the line, leads him into turn three, and Russ Storr immediately has some serious problem. And the car just stops. He pulled right to the outside. Now, I guess, cruising around. No, no, he was going to get right to the front as fast as possible. Volkswagen, Rick Hart, Chevy P4, and Johnson once again gets the jump. And Mike Favulli this time makes a mad charge down the bottom. They left him a hole, and he took it. Favulli goes all the way into the lead, coming out of turn four for lap number one. Bentley has dropped into second spot, but now goes past Howard, Harry Johnson into second. Mike Seymour was the other car that dropped out. He's over there with people all around it with their heads in the engine, too. Lots of problems in this heat. And it looks like we're ending up with a two-class heat here. We have Mike Favulli and Bentley Warren out distancing the bunch of guys who are going to fight for third spot. Considering Bentley only has a few hot laps in this car, I'd say he's doing quite well as he's catching up to Mike Favulli, who has two feature wins so far this year. Mike 
Faruli in the 80 with Fontana Power. Bentley Warren in the 45 with a Gurdy engine. I'm sorry, a Pontiac engine. The 26 has the Gurdy. Faruli managing to stay roughly the same distance ahead of Warren, who's diving hard into turn three. Three to go this time by, and Bentley closes up in that turn three on Fabuli. He's driving harder into the turns. Can't get on it quite as soon, and Fabuli manages to hold it going out, but he lost some that time. Bentley moves in again with two to go. With two to go, Bentley is driving in. Bentley's crammed into that cockpit. He's a lot bigger than Drew Fanoro, for whom that car was built. White flag as Bentley gets right up on the bumper of Mike Fabuli. One more time around, Fabuli running right on a rail, right around the bottom. Bentley moves out a second spot, out of the second turn, heads for the outside in turn three. Fabuli hangs on down the bottom. Bentley comes high around the outside. I think I better wait for the scorers. The scores say Bentley did it. Bentley Warren from Kennebunkport, Maine. And I would guess his first midget ride in, I may be wrong, but I'll bet it's 10 years. Rolling on the speedway now, the limited sportsman semi feature. These are the limited sportsman drivers with either no points or a lesser amount of points, keeping them out of the Qualifying heats. I believe we missed the 101 in the lineup. That's Richard Tibbetts. Again, green is out at turn four. Semi feature action for the limited sportsman. The number 87, Bob Coet, jumps into a quick lead. The 118, Jeff Charland, works to the outside of the number 20, takes over second place position. Pat Pearson back to third. The 47 on the move goes way high. Side by side battle with the 97 now. Chris Grondon in the 47. Ralph Height in the 97. Here comes John Maycomber. Not quite room enough as he tries to go between cars and enter that top five. Couldn't quite do it. Lee continues to be in the hands of Bob Collette in the 87. A lot of pressure from Jeff Charland in the 118. Ralph Height now takes over third as he dives beneath the number 20. Brings John Maycomber along with him. They move into the third and fourth place positions. Chris Grondon taking over fifth as he works beneath the number 20. Dowdy on the move in the 124. Tries to dive beneath the 47 of Grondon. Wasn't quite room enough, but out of turn four, he takes over. Position number five. Meanwhile, back up front, it continues to be Bob Collette in the 87, showing the way, followed by Jeff Charland in the 118. Ralph Height in third place, gaining ground now on the 118 as is John Maycomber, right at the back bumper of Height. Tinker Doughty continues his charge to the front, now to the outside of John Maycomber in the 96. 
Passing flag going out to the 11. He gets it in on the rail. Then on the move, Tinker Dowdy in the 124, working to the outside of the 96. Up into the fourth place position. Up to the back of the 118 and then loses some ground. John Nacomber. Back to the inside of the 118. 118 gets way up high, loses two positions in the process. That's Jeff Charland in the 118. Got the car a little high. Caution flag is out. Have the number eight turned about on the backstretch. All clear from the top of the flagstaff. Ready to restart tonight's limited sportsman semi feature. Looking for a start and turn four. Long collect. Green is out. Long collect. Looking to recapture the lead, but he has a strong challenger to his outside in Ralph Height. Collette goes a little wide, opens up the inside now for John Maycomber to challenge. Maycomber tries to fill that inside groove, couldn't quite do it, but he's back to challenge at turn four. John Maycomber with a bumper ahead across the strike. Right. 87 and 97 now to battle side by side for second. John Maycomber with a move right up the inside, car up against the back stretch wall, the 118 of Jeff Charland. Takes the car right out over the top of turn three. Keeps the car moving. We stay under green. Ralph Height battling with Jeff Charland for that second place position. Ralph Height with the advantage. Tinker Dowdy now up to challenge for third as he works beneath the 87 of Charland. Flat tire on the 118 of Charland. Trying to limp that 118 back into the pit area. Two laps to go. John Makeover. Ralph Height, Tinker Dowdy, your top three. Then comes Lloyd Washburn in the number 60 in fourth place position. The 87 Bob Collette battling with the number three. That's David Raymond in the number three. White flag in the air. Battle for third. Lloyd Washburn and Tinker Dowdy. Checkered flag in the air. John Maycomber collects the semi feature over Ralph Height. Lloyd Washburn, Tinker Dowdy, and David Raymond. down to the start finish line area winner of tonight's limited sportsman semi feature from Saco Bain in the number 96 John Maycomber. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh. Limited sportsman consolation event. Only the top eight to qualify for the main event. Dave Langless and Rick Frenet bring the field down. Green is out. Langless with a slight advantage across the strike. Down into turn one. Caution flag right back out on the field as the cars work the backstretch.
right now. All clear once again from flagman Eddie Walsh. Concy drivers will try to start it once again. Dave Langless in the 93. Rick Frenette in the 54 on the front line. Flagman points to turn four. They have gone nowhere. Green is out. Side by side across the stripe. Langless to the inside, Frenette to the outside. At turn two and on the back stretch, Rick Frenette from the outside. Tangle on the back stretch. Car turned about. Several cars collect that. Looks like the 78 of high point man Dave Fecto. Word from the safety crew is that the drivers are okay in that skirmish on the back stretch. Flagman signals the cars back into a column of twos, indicating that the lineup is correct, and we should be looking for a green once again. Scott Chapman back out of the pit area after his encounter with the tire barrier out of turn four. And if that 78 crew is scrambling to get the 78 back on the tail end of this race, they have just moments to do it. One eye on the field, one eye on the exit of pit road. Take a small miracle to get the car back together. But I'm sure they don't want to sit this race out if there's any way. No sign of the 78 yet. The car's ready to start at turn four. Green is out. Dave Weinless with the advantage across the stripe. Once again, Rick Frenette trying to draw it even in the turns. He does at turn two. Once again, Rick Frenette takes over the lead on the backstretch. All right, charging Rick Frenette back at the point. Veteran limited sportsman campaigner here at the Speedway. Rookie Dave Langless has been a strong, impressive runner in the number 93 in second. Gary Clough at third, Larry Vos is fourth. Side by side, battle for fifth. Larry Gelinas to the inside. Tim Jenrin to the outside. Now Gelinas has fifth position to himself. Remember, only eight cars to qualify. That last qualifier at the moment would be Dennis Hall in the 94. Kevin Buck and Mike Field now just outside a qualifying position. Comfortable lead over Dame L Dave Langless. Then comes Gary Cup, Pluck, Larry Bose, Larry Gelinas, Viva North, Tim Jenner in the 12, and Dennis Hall in the 94. The 94, the last qualifier with Kevin Buck and Mike Field just outside the qualifying position. Flagman indicates we're coming up on the halfway point. Eight down, seven to go. Only the top eight to grab a qualifying position. Kevin Buck now trying to find a way around the 94 of Dennis Hall has sent the 25 to the outside of number 94 and will mount a challenge now for that last qualifying position. Kevin Buck now has 
put himself into a qualifying position, not going to settle for the last qualifying position as he looks to work his way around the number 12 of Tim Gendron. Caution flag flies once again. Tell us the caution is just to allow the rescue, rescue unit to leave the pit area. Not wanting any under green. Ten laps down, five to go. Flagman Eddie Walsh gives the drivers the all clear. This time, Rick Frenette from the inside, Dave Langless to the outside. Green is out. Very slow start out of turn four. Rick Frenette. From the pole, Dave Langless to second. Gary Clough, Larry Gelinas now up to fourth. Larry Vos is fifth. Scramble back at that eighth and ninth position. Last qualifying position, a battle between Dennis Hall in the 94, Kevin Buck in the 25. Two laps to go this time by. White flag is out, one to go. Last qualifying position will come down two inches. Cars get together between turns three and four. Larry Vos taken out of shape. Checkered flag flies in a scramble at the line. Consolation event grabbed by Rick Furnett. Followed by Dave Langless. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to direct your attention trackside for the mid-season championship presentations and Andy Cusack. Andy? Thank you, Bruce, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine night of racing here at the Raceway. A nice warm night, not so humid as last week either. With me is Louis Mayetta, the president of the Maine State Stock Car Racing Association. And for the past two seasons now, there's been a special award at the mid-season of the year. Louis Mayetta can tell us a little bit about it and what it's designed for. Louis? Thank you, Andy. Uh, last year was the first time in quite some years, anyway, that we started a mid-season championship. And what we're doing is as most of you know, that buy 50-50 tickets every week. Uh, as tough as the economy's been for the past couple of years, we're trying to keep these drivers going out here every week. And thanks to you people that buy the 50-50s every week, um, I'm proud to, to say that we're giving out roughly $13,000 for the mid-season. And then at the end of the year, at the awards banquet, we give out the rest of it. But again, it's, it's all thanks to you people pulling these guys through for the tough times that they're going through with sponsorship so that these guys are here every single week for you people. So I want to thank you very much on behalf of Maine State Stock Car Racing Association. And we certainly know the drivers appreciate it because most all of them have already received their paychecks from the mid-season payoff. What they haven't received yet is their hardware. And this is the item they can put on the shelf that they receive at this time and they're ready to be welcomed by you. We'll begin with third place in our limited sportsman division. A gentleman who led the point lead for pretty much up through the halfway point of the year, but slipped out in the final couple of waning weeks. Nonetheless, he deserves the recognition. Would you welcome forward Beaver Norton? <laughs> Finishing runner-up in the limited sportsman division mid-season championship pursuit. Still looking for a championship title overall the rest of the season. Welcome forward out of Scarborough, Maine, Larry Gelinas.
Some folks call this man too tall. You'll see why when he steps forward. He is the mid-season champion from Standish Man in the Limited Sportsman Division, Too Tall Dave Bechtel. Dave, we'll catch a quick word with you. Congratulations on a championship award. And uh, how are things going for you? Well, tonight we've had a little rough break. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be running the feature. Uh, so far this year, we've had a great year. The crew's done a great job. Uh, we really enjoyed racing here at Beach Ridge. It's a real professional racetrack, and uh, hopefully we'll do better the rest of the year. Well, tonight is a little tough break for you. If you don't get to run that feature race, it's a real tight uh, point situation in the limited sportsman division. How do you feel about maybe having to set out a night after not qualifying, and what's this going to do to uh, stay uh, king of the hill in the limited sportsman point standings? Well, it's going to make things pretty rough for the 78 racing team. Uh, Tonight is the point and a half race. Uh, if the guys under me do fairly well, I could lose the point lead tonight. Uh, but uh, we'll stay strong the rest of the year. As strong as you are and you have been, we're sure you'll be right there at the end. We wish you the best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, your top three finishers from the Limited Sportsman Division. First time any type of championship award has been handed out to a brand new division here at this Speedway. The middle of 1991 sees our mid-season champions from the Super Sportsman Division. Finishing third place in the Super Sportsman Division to date so far, welcome forward from Freeport, Maine, Bubba Pelton. Finishing runner-up in the Super Sportsman point standings at midway through the season, still looking for the elusive first win. He's a two-time champion from the Limited Sportsman Division. We'll be looking for him in victory lane out of Scarborough, Maine. Welcome Kevin Bergen. And a former champion from the Limited Sportsman Division, experience from the late model Sportsman Division has put him on top of the heap in the Super Sportsman ranks. Welcome out of Saco, Maine, Ken McLeod. <laughs> Ken, this is not the first time we'll have a chance to speak with you during the season. A lot of wins so far, and here's some extra uh, money for you so far in the hardware. How are things going and looking toward the end of the year? Oh, this makes it real good, and hopefully things will keep going good for the rest of the year. I think we have a real good chance of winning it all. I'd really like to thank all my sponsors and, and all the fans here. I mean, without them, we'd be nothing. We wish you the best of luck. I think a lot of people would agree. Have a chance of taking it all away. We wish you the best of luck. It would not uh, be fair to move on to our next division without first recognizing somebody else from the Super Sportsman Division who, going into the final weeks, heading up to the mid-season championship point battle, suffered an injury that took him out of the driver's seat. He's back in the driver's seat now, but he was 32 points ahead when he left the driver's seat. The gentleman that filled in for him picked up a couple of wins. And to explain a little bit to you folks, these gentlemen receiving the hardware tonight are the top drivers from the, the division. However, the payroll checks go out to the top point holding cars. Well, because this gentleman put a driver into his car who went out and won two of the three races he competed in, his car ended up the championship car in the mid-season champion point battle. And here's a check for $700 coming to him. Welcome forward from the mid-season championship car, Chris Roll. Congratulations, Chris. It's good to have you back in the seat again. Well, it feels good to be back. I hope I can uh, uphold what Scott was doing for me. But uh, I think everything's going good, and I hope things will get better. Well, tell us a bit. It had to be uh, hard sitting on the sidelines. Tell us a little bit about the injuries and uh, what it took to get over them. Well, it was hard watching, I guess. Uh, you know, I, that crash I had, I uh, hurt my ribs a little bit, my chest, uh, my spine, I guess, was the biggest thing they were worried about. Uh, everything seems to be getting back together, and I've been going to therapy and stuff like that, so uh, everything feels good now, so I'm going to try it again. Well, you're certainly making a good run of it. Before you walk off, you don't get the big flashy trophy, but you get a check for $700. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the top finishers from the Super Sportsman Division. And finally, our late model Sportsman Division of Driving. Finishing third in the point standings, and I should point out that all the top three drivers in the mid-season pursuit are former champions of the late model division. This driver from 1989 out of Scarborough, Maine, welcome third place in the late model standings, Mike Johnson. Finishing runner-up in the late model sportsman point standings out of Sanford, Maine, a former four-time champion from the late model sportsman division. Welcome, Bob Randall. <laughs> 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 
And finally, ending up on the top of the heap, going into it just one or two weeks ago, he took over the point lead. He was there when it counted. He's the mid-season champion from the late model division, last year's two-time champion, Mike Maeda. There you are again, Mike, just out of two championship wins at this Speedway last year, a total of four to your credit, now the mid-season champion. How are things looking? Looking real good, Andy. You know, I got real good help on the race car, and that helps a lot. You know, and all you got to do is get in and stare it. Uh, you know, my parents have helped, have helped us a lot. Steve Roman built the race car at the shop, and it's, you know, everything's been just going our way. I mean, it can all change, so racing with a good bunch of guys, and I guess you can't beat it, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for our top three mid-season champions from the late model sportsman division and all of our champions today. We thank you for this moment. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is our tradition for you to give me some assistance. Now with those four most famous words in auto racing, on the count of three. One, two, three, gentlemen. incentive as the points battle is very tight. Lights are out atop the Chevy Luminar. All clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh as the gl drivers glance to the track. Green is out. Good even start this time, side by side across the line, down into turn one. Palsava puts the bumper ahead. Out of turn two, half a car ahead. Gary Palsava taking over the point from the outside. Bobby Libby trying to follow suit as he now works to the outside of the 83 of Carrier. Steve Carrier trying to draw it even once again with Gary Palsava. Palsava out of shape, out of turn four. Tag hard by the 37 of Bobby Harrison. Harrison trying to take the car right back to pit road, but has some heavy suspension damage. As Gary Palsava got the car turned sideways out of turn four. being waged. Mike Johnson back on the speedway. We'll rejoin the end of the lineup, all clear from flagman Eddie Walsh. Pace car will make its way onto the infield pit road. Gary Johnson now on the point with Mike Mayetta Jr. Green is out. Gary Johnson sideways out of turn four, tangles with Kerry Winslow. Has to back right out of it. At the point, Mike Mayetta Jr. followed by Barry Babb. Barry Babb, you remember from the qualifying heat, came on strong to win the heat in the last lap. Was very impressive last week, only to have a tire go away in the final few laps. Rookie Mike Mayetta Jr. with a strong run in the number three. Cusack is third. He had a strong performance in his qualifying heat. Kerry Winslow is fourth. Mike Mayetta is up to fifth already. Defending champion and current point leader. Quickly up to the fifth place position. Barry Babb right at the back bumper now of young Mike Mayetta. Takes it way to the outside, trying to set up a bit to the outside of the number three. Here comes Barry Babb off turn 
two, wheel to wheel with Mike Mayetta. They exit turn four, side by side, across the stripe, side by side, in a turn one, slight advantage to Babb from the outside. Barry Babb now on the back stretch, squeezes down by, into turn three, trying to get the entire car ahead of Mike Mayetta Jr., and he does. Across the stripe, completing lap number eight, Barry Babb, the new leader. Mike Mayetta Jr. is second, Kerry Winslow third, side-by-side -side battle for fourth, Bobby Babb in the number four, Glenn Cusack in the two. Cusack goes a little wide, opens up the inside for Mike Mayetta. Steve Carrier takes the 83 onto the pit road. Paul Johnson off the pace in the 35. Three wide racing on the backstretch as Mike Johnson had to back out of it. Coming into turn three, we had Joe Bowser, Bobby Randall, and Mike Johnson headed in there three abreast. And Mike Johnson in the 33 wisely backed out of that. Barry Babb. Now his brother Bobby Babb. Working to the outside and up into second place. The Babb brothers occupy first and second. Here comes Mike Mayetta around son Mike. So we have two brothers in first and second, father, son in third and fourth. Kerry Winslow now up to challenge young Mike Mayetta. So it's a family affair here tonight. The Bab brothers one and two. And for a moment, we had the father, son, Mayetta team, third and fourth. Now they ride third and fifth. Glenn Cusack on the move as he tries to work around Andy Lude in the number 56. Laps down, working in lap 16. Barry Babb at the point, followed by older brother Bobby Babb in the number four. Then comes defending champion Mike Mayetta. Kerry Winslow as the top four have broken away from the rest of the pack. Glenn Cusack trying to find a way around young rookie Mike Mayetta. And has perhaps done so as he exits turn four, takes over position five. Blackman Eddie Walsh indicates it will be halfway next time by. Mike Mayetta now has worked beneath the number four of Bobby Babb. Bobby Babb fights back on the outside. Kerry Winslow right up to the back bumper of Mike Mayetta. Mike Mayetta momentarily boxed in as he is at the back bumper of Barry Babb, has Bobby Babb to his outside. Kerry Winslow at his back bumper. Twenty laps down. Three-way battle now being waged at the front. Bobby Babb looks to the outside of brother Barry Babb. Continues to battle side by side with Mike Mayetta for second place. Bad Brothers continue that battle. Very bad to the inside, Mike Mayetta to the outside. Side-by-side -side battle at the point. Come on to the slower car of Paul Johnson. Mayetta has to back out of it. Here comes Kerry Winslow. Very bad right on the rail, trying to hold off the defending champion, Mike Mayetta. 
Randy Sandbone into the infield with a number 71 as evidently mechanical failure plagues the 71. Mike Mayetta out of turn four takes over the point. Mike Mayetta with a burst of speed from the outside. Out and around the zero of Barry Babb. Mike Mayetta looking for win number four on the 1990 season. some distance on Barry Bat, and the field tightens up from second position on back. Kerry Winslow now looking to the outside of that. He's followed by Glenn Cusack, Andy Lou, Bobby Randall, and Mike Johnson as the top six. Top seven have actually pulled away from the rest of the field. Bob Randall on the move on the outside. Bursts of power out of two down the back stretch as he takes a shot to the outside of Glenn Cusack. Up into fourth place position. Laps winding down. Flagman Eddie Walsh indicates just two to go. Just two to go this time by. Mike Mayetta with an impressive show of strength in the number 13. Followed by Mary Babb, then a side-by-side -side battle for third. Kerry Winslow and Bobby Randall. Randall taking over that third-place position. White flag in the air. Randall now trying to set up a challenge for second. Setting to the outside of Barry Babb. Checkered flag will fly. Mike Mayetta claims feature number four. Barry Babb second, Bobby Randall third, Kerry Winslow in the fourth. Tell us that Mike Johnson in the 33 was the fifth place finisher. Mike Mayetta comes down to collect the colors from Flagman Eddie Walsh. We'll parade the checkered flag and then be back. Irish to please see the officer at the main gate. Rocky Irish, please see the officer at the main gate. That's directly in back of the flag stand area, please. As Mike Manor returns the colors to Flagman A. Watch and prepares to exit his number 13. Hey, yeah, back at the front. How was it? Went good, you know. I had a little bit of trouble over there with Bobby Babb, and it was my throttle sticking in the race car, because obviously he doesn't know that. He come down on me a little bit, and, you know, I feel bad about that, but we won the race, and I guess that's what we're out here to do. How do we resolve something like that in the pit area? That, uh, people probably wonder what happens after this. I'll just go over and talk to him, and if, you know, he understands, he won't punch me in the nose. If he don't like it, he may give me a punch, but... Well, I think everything will work out well, Bob, he's a gentleman. Tim Seavey from Seavey's Furniture and Appliance has the presentation for you tonight, Tim. Hey Mike, uh, here's a trophy to, for tonight's race, and uh, good job. Uh, you look a little tough on the outside rail there. Those boys from Wyndham gave you a run. Yeah, they're good guys to race with, really, you know, and, uh, you know, I hope they understand that. I mean, that was a racing accident, and it was nothing intentional. The outside groove was horrible. We had some stuff down on the outside, and I'm sure he was experiencing that, and, you know, I feel bad about it, but I can't take it back. As they say, that's racing. Who's the pal we have with us tonight, Tim? This is uh, Catherine Seavey. She's uh, come down to give Mike the trophy tonight. Can you say thank you? Can you say thank you? No. <laughs> this will be our next Seavey that will be in charge. We can see that already. I hope so soon. <laughs> 
Well, before I forget, Mike, the $50 gift contingency tonight goes to the late model sportsman division from Big A Auto Parts. We congratulate you. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank CVs and AutoWise. All this stuff really helps us an awful lot, and without them, we wouldn't be here. We congratulate you again. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Mike Maeda. Cotton is in the 08 for the feature event. And Tony Field in the number 11. Butch Buzzell in the number 15 at the rear of the lineup. Tim Maloney shows the way for lap number one. Doug Shores and Bobby Cotton get it tangled together, do a nice job of avoiding the barrier in turn one. As they appeared headed for the concrete out of turn one. And did a nice job of avoiding that, Tim Maloney. About a car and a half length lead over Spike Manitol. Then comes Steve Howard, Dave Sprague, then a side-by-side -side battle, Danny Palmer and Kevin Durgan. Spike Manitol closes in on the number 69. Steve Howard in third. Dave Sprague is fourth. Danny Palmer fifth. David Bath, Ken McLeod, and Kevin Durgan all battling to try to work up into that top five. Spike Manitol all over the back bumper of the 69 of Tim Maloney. A lot of pressure to the youngster in the number 69. David Bath on the move on the outside now. Works to the outside of the 93 of Palmer. David Bath, who had such a strong run in his qualifying heat, is on the move on the backstretch. Now to the outside of the number one. Bath side by side battle. Now it doubles up up in the second place position. Spike Manitol and Steve Howard. Steve Howard trying to mount a challenge to race leader Tim Maloney. Super Sportsman Field has tightened up considerably as the weeks have gone on. Has rubbed just a little bit in turn one. Maloney gets a little out of shape, straightens the car back out. Steve Howard continues the charge to the outside. Has a mirror full of Dave Bath. As Bath was trying to advance the outside and then the 03 set into that outside groove. Spike Manitol gets the car out of shape. Along with Howard, everybody has to back out of it from second place on back. That shuffles things around a little bit, gives a little breathing space to Spike Manitol, but not for long. Here comes Steve Howard again. Thirteen laps recorded on the leaderboard. Tim Maloney continues to show the way. Spike Manitol. Steve Howard, David Bath now into that outside groove once again. And his back bumper, Ken McLeod. They'll be approaching the halfway mark. Fifteen down, fifteen to go. Dave 
Bath on the move once again in the number five as he works to the outside. Now to the outside of Spike Manitol in the 89. Spike Manitol blew to the back bumper of Tim Maloney. Dave Bath on the move. Now to the outside of race leader Maloney. Dave Bath out of turn four takes over the point as they complete lap number 17. New leader Dave Bath in the number five looking for feature win number one on this 1991 season. Young man who has had to overcome a lot of mechanical problems in the number five. Three wide into turn one. Very dangerous move. Super sportsman drivers. Handle that three wide bid through turns one and two. Spike Manitol continues in second place. The side by side battle now. Kent McLeod and Steve Howard for third. McLeod now momentarily boxed in as he is at the back bumper of the 89 of Spike Manitow. As Steve Howard now work to the inside group. That will open up the outside for Ken McLeod and McLeod quickly moves to the outside of Spike Manitow. Also in the outside group working his way up from the back of the pack. Chris Rule in the number 14. Your eyes on the number six of Ken McLeod as he has now worked himself up into the third place position. 24 laps completed. They are working lap number 25. Like my Eddie Walsh indicates, it will be just five to go when they cross the stripe next time. Dave Bath looking for feature win number one. Caution flag flies. Car backwards out of turn two, starting down the back stretch. 25 down, five to go, all clear from flagman Eddie Walsh. Dave Bath, Steve Howard as the pace car makes its way onto the infield pit road. Green is out, out of turn four. Cross the strike, David Bath by a fender. Ken McLeod. Works beneath the 03 of Steve Howard now. Trying to take over second place, he does at turn three. Almost dove beneath the number five of Dave Bath. Wasn't quite room enough out of turn four. Looks beneath the number five out of turn two down the back stretch. Couldn't quite do it. Dave Bath, I'm sure, trying to hold that number five on the rail. Ken McLeod is the goodbye. I'm sure Dave Bath wants him to have to do it to the outside. Blackman Eddie Walsh indicates just two to go when they cross the stripe. David Bath looking for win number one. Ken McLeod looking for win number five. Two to go. Can David Bath hold off the number six of Ken McLeod? White flag in the air. David Bath now with a mirror full of Ken McLeod and Steve Howard as they go at it side by side. Check it, flag in the air. The five gets a little sideways. First feature win of the year to Dave Bath in the number five. Leaderboard shows Ken McLeod in the second place position. David Bath returns the colors to flagman Eddie Walsh. Welcome in for the first time in the victory lane, David Bath. <laughs> David, congratulations. You're all smiles and it's been a long time coming for you. Yeah, uh, we've run down here quite a few years and this is a 
I think the first main feature we've ever got. Well, it's got to feel some good tonight, and it sure wasn't easy. You must have been some uh, cautious on that last restart. Yeah, it started to get a little loose, and I see Kenny coming. I, all I figured I could do just hold on and go. Coming out of turn four, the very end of it, the car looked like it got a little bit sideways. The coming inside and outside of you, what went through your mind in the final 100 yards? Well, I figured we was going to go across the line backwards at that point. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, you came across Frontwood, and best of all, you won the race, and we congratulate you for that, David. Tim Seavey from Seavey's Furniture and Appliance has the presentation. Congratulations, Dave, on your first win and, uh, from Seavey's and Whirlpool and uh, Beach Ridge Speedway. Well, keeps inviting us back. I don't know why, but uh, congratulations for me. My son, Christopher, next generation, <laughs> and uh, really good job. Looks like you had an really easy run of it early, but uh, a little pressure at the end. Well, uh, thanks to you people. You know, a lot of this is possible. And thanks to all the fans that come down and support us every week. Now, without them, there wouldn't be any racing. Well, we congratulate you again, Dave. And on to the picture ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for David Bass. position. Donnie Witten winning that battle as he takes over the second place position. Rick Verrill and Earl Glidden go at it side by side for position three. Gary Gluff in fourth. Motor goes away in the number seven, and that takes a good part of the field. Not only a tough break for Steve Reno, as evidently the engine gave out in the number seven, dumped the oil there on the speedway, and that took nearly half the field right out over the top of turns three and four. Right now, two laps down. Flagman Eddie Walsh gives the all clear. Looking for a start at turn four. Earl Glidden. Gary Clark Green is out. Side by side. Earl Glidden to the inside. Gary Clark to the outside. They continue the side by side battle down through two. On the back stretch. Slight advantage from the outside to Gary Clark. Coming to the stripes side by side once again. Perhaps a bumper ahead by Gary Clough in the zero. Now at turn two, Earl Glidden with the advantage. Still problems on the 64 problems out of two turn down the back stretch. The 61 of Gordon Nelson. Heavy sparks pouring from beneath that car. Earl Glidden with the advantage. Now the 21 of Don Colbert up the inside to take over the advantage as they are working into lap number six. Battle is for second. Earl Glidden to the outside, Gary Clough to the inside. They go at it wheel to wheel. White Shepherd on the move in the number 34. Don Copeland with an impressive run in the number 21. 
put some distance now on second place competitor Gary Clough. Earl Glidden continues in third. John Tapley is fourth. Paul Ross is fifth. Man on the move on the outside on the back stretch. Dwight Shepard in the number 34. Shepard now up to challenge the fourth place competitor, John Tapley. White Shepard works his way around the 50, solidly in the fourth place position. Shepard, one of the real veterans here in the limited sportsman division. The zero of Gary Clark. Rookie Kurt Beam on the move in the number 42 as he works to the outside of Paul Ross in the 138. Trying a, to find a way up to challenge Don Tapley in the number 15. indicates it will be the halfway point next time by. Comfortable lead for Don Culpert in the number 21. Dwight Shepard continues his march to the front as he works himself out and around the 76 of Earl Glidden up into the third place position. Now setting his sights on Gary Clough. Kurt Beam in the 42 has done a nice job of working himself up into the top five. On the move now on the outside, the 54 of Rick Frenette. He is up to challenge now for the fifth place position. White Shepard up trying to mount a challenge now to the second place competitor, Gary Clough. <laughs> Gary Clough and White Shepard now side by side. Battle is four seconds. Slight advantage across the line to Gary Clough from the inside. This time Dwight Shepard from the outside puts a bumper ahead. Takes a slight advantage out of turn two down the backstretch. Three quarters of the car by. Gary Clough fights back on the inside. Dwight Shepard finally able to work the 34. Out and around the zero of Gary Clough. Has second place to himself. But race leader Don Culper has an entire straightaway lead over second place competitor Dwight Shepard.
24 laps complete now. It will be coming up on just five to go. Don Culper with a straightaway lead over second place Dwight Shepard. Gary Clough has Rick Frenette closing on him. has worked himself up into the top five. Flagman Eddie Walsh in the case. Next time around, it will be just two to go. Don Cope maintains his straightaway lead over the second place competitor, Dwight Shepard. Gary Cluck third, Rick Frenette fourth, and Donnie Morse is fifth. White flag out for race leader Culprit. Check it flag in the air. Don Culpert in the number 21 with an impressive win. Tires straight away over second place competitor Dwight Shepard. Then comes Gary Clough, Rick Frenette, and Donnie Morris. Don Culpert. Don, congratulations. Thank you. That looked like an easy street out there for you tonight. Yeah. It was pretty, uh, pretty good going. I'm glad the 76 pushed up a little bit. It helped me, but I don't know. It started to push at the end. Tires from last week, and just wore them out. So just holding on for hoping there wasn't any cautions. I had Billy Thompson coming up, I guess. So who knows what he could do. He goes pretty good. Well, I tell you, tonight nobody was going better than you. You had a half lap lead on everybody else. A fantastic show. Don Chamberlain from CB's Furniture and Appliance has the presentation for you. Congratulations. You did a good job. Thank you. I'd like to say, I'd like to say thanks to all my guys in the pit. If it wasn't for them, my mother and father, Lawn Works, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. Well, here you are, and we congratulate you on it. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Don Copra, Jr. says Mike Favulli lost it. We're going to go back. As I said, come from the pack, back of the pack. Keep an eye on him. I thought it might take him four or five laps. I didn't know he was going to go four wide into the first turn. Here we go again. Joey Coy and Bobby Seymour bring him down. The fast cars are up front now. 
Corey and Seymour, the Fontana and the Volkswagen. Corey with that Fontana power pulls right out of way. Seymour closes it up a little in the corners, but he's having trouble as Coy outpowers him down the straightaway. Coy still out in front. Seymour trying hard to close up. Stevie Eldridge now is in third. Mike Seymour has come from the back into fourth. He's fourth. Mike Seymour in the eight is working on Stevie Eldridge for that third spot. Moving back, Paul Lawless is holding down fifth. Here comes Mike Favulli, who's come from the back of the pack into sixth. Then comes Rick Harden. Bentley Warren is going to take seventh. But look at the speed on Coy and Seymour. Coy and Seymour have opened up a big lead over now. Mike Seymour is third. It's Joey Coy and then the two Seymour brothers. Stevie Eldridge is fourth. Paul Lawless fifth. Mike Favulli sixth. Bentley Warren seventh. And I think the, that that's going to be the class of this field. Coy now moves to the outside as Mike Lugel's brand new machine is having shakedown problems. He's fallen right to the back of the back. Coy and Seymour set a fantastic pace. Mike Seymour trying hard to stay up with it. Stevie Eldridge hanging on to fourth. Paul Lawless fifth. Here comes Bentley. Bentley just got around. Mike Favulli moves to the outside of Paul Lawless. And has fifth spot. As Coy and Seymour get into traffic. They're setting a fantastic pace. Moving through these slower cars. That Tremendous clip. Side by side, and the Fontana out drags the Volkswagen once again. Coy and Seymour one and two. What happened last time is as the tires got warmer, Seymour got hotter. Whoops! A little bang in there as Bentley was outside of Mike, and Mike and Seymour wanted it back, and he took third back and stuffed Bentley back into fourth. Stevie Eldridge holding on to fifth with ten to go. Paul Lawless still sixth. Going into turn three once again, Bobby Seymour pulls right up on Coy. Looks like Mike Seymour and Bentley Warren are staying right about where they are, but the battle is going to be for the lead. It's quite a battle for the next four spots back there, spots five through eight. In turn three, coming out of turn four now, but right up front, where all the glory is. Seymour moves wide on turn four, tries to get on him, can't quite do it. Seymour gets up on him again, coming out of turn two. He gets pulled down the straightaway. Seymour's running outside now, giving up that advantage to Coy. Seymour moves outside of him in turn two. Going to try and pin him behind the lap car. Down of extra. Seymour way out wide. Three wide. Can't quite do it. And Seymour loses it. Bobby Seymour lost it out there in that, all that speedy dry and stuff. Front stretch, Coy makes it, Favoli gets under, Seymour takes over second. Bobbles a little bit, Seymour can't take advantage of it, Favoli has second spot, it's the two Fontanas out in front now. Favoli, who had to make that pit stop for some reason, on a yellow, is now up to second spot. But it doesn't look like he has much for Coy. Our point leader is, stands a good chance of making a big game tonight guy who was chasing him, a defending champion in the pits. Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, Bobby Seymour having a little trouble with the traffic. He just was tempted to go three wide there again, down a backstretch. He couldn't do it. Last by those guys in the fourth turn. But there's only four laps to go. And those front four cars look very evenly matched. Don't see much of anything happening to them. Bobby Seymour is coming flying back up here. But there's little chance he's going to make it to the front now. Two to go. Seymour through this next batch of cars. As Joey Coy gets the white flag. Fabuli, Mike Seymour, Bentley Warren. Bobby Seymour comes out wide looking for fifth spot. As he goes into turn one, he has fifth spot away from Stevie Eldridge as the checkered flag comes out for Joey Coy as he almost got tangled with a lap car again. Taking the win here at Beach Ridge tonight. Well, we're certainly glad to have you with us here tonight, Joey. And Tim Seavey, our sponsor tonight from Seavey's Furniture and Appliance, has a trophy to take home for you. Congratulations there. That was a heck of a race. Uh, can't believe you, believe you guys go around this track that fast. <laughs> well, these cars are real low to the ground, and they have the wings on the top to push them down. And with the horsepower to rate for weight, it makes them real fast through the corners. So that's why we get so much straightaway speed out of that little four-cylinder engine. Well, that's a good explanation for us tonight, and we certainly uh, commend you on putting on a very fast show out there. You guys look wonderful. Nice job tonight, Joey. Thank you. We like coming to Maine. We're glad to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for race winner, Joey Coy. Bruce Elder, back to you. Thank you, Andy. clear from Flagman Eddie Walsh. A little bit different from what you've seen thus far. Three abreast, racing already. Green is out. 33-77, Steve Berry, last week's feature winner, jumps right out into a quick lead. 20 gets it back away from the wall, keeps it under power. We stay under green. Cars tangle in between turns one and two. We'll bring out the caution flag. What? Steve Perry Jr. and Clyde Hennessy. Joseph Hennessy, rather. No, Clyde Hennessy. Stephen Berry Jr. in the seven. Seven. Clyde Hennessy Green is out as the guys approach turn three. Stephen Berry right back into a quick lead. Clyde Hennessy in the number eight. The 22 of Bruce Johnson. Bruce Johnson up to second now with the number 22. Then comes the 54. 54 is driven by Jeff Greenstreet. Cars tangle in the two turns, starting down the backstretch. Car gets turned about up against the backstretch wall. We have a car going backwards down the backstretch. He gets it turned about, but happens to be right in front of another car. Seventy-seven of Steve Berry with a comfortable lead now over the rest of the pack. Caution flag on the field once again. 
couple of cars apparently hooked together in the three turn area. between turns one and two and that will put the field right back under caution once again. Green is out once again. The 54 your leader. The number eight Clyde Hennessy Jr. unofficially in second place. The 23 of Craig Bernier challenging now for that second place position from the outside. It will be two laps to go this time by, indicates Flagman Eddie Walsh. Spin by the number eight up into the infield. Craig Bernie now dives to the inside of the number 54, going into turn number three. Side by side battle shaping up for the lead. White flag is out. The number 54 of Jeff Greenstreet hangs on to the lead. Followed by the 23 of Bernie. Jeff Greenstreet from South Portland, Maine. The evening. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to stay around for a bit, you are certainly welcome to do so. If you are leaving, we'll urge you to please drive carefully on your way home and hope that you'll make it a habit to be right back here with us at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway.